Walk out now. It's the Ron and Don Show. He's Ron. I'm Don. G-forces around here somewhere. And uh, Charlie was just chewing on your table. Sorry about that. Yeah, I hope he doesn't chew on the chairs upstairs. You know what's kind of weird <laughs> is I didn't think he chewed on things anymore. And then every time we bring him over to Ron of the Ron and Don's house, he finds something to chew on. I, thought, I know. I thought at seven months our puppy was past his stage, and, and I guess he's Evidently, not. the corner of that platform is <laughs> super tasty. You took it really well, though. You know what? This I don't care about, but like the walnut chairs upstairs, if he chews on that, I'll yeah. be a little upset. I was at one of my rentals the other day, and I came around the corner, and I was there with my friend Joe, and he's like, hey, what happened to the stairwell here? And I'm like, ooh, looks like uh, Charlie likes fur from 1922. He likes to chew on wood, evidently. He does. Anyway. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks to the tens of thousands of people that listen to the podcast. It really blows us away that you guys care so much about it. And don't forget... If you're listening to the podcast and all of a sudden, boom, it stops and it restarts, chances are what? Yeah, we've gotten quite a few emails and complaints about this. Uh, you sent me uh, some texts that you were getting uh, over the, the last week from episode four. Yeah. And some people are starting. And, and so forgive me. If you know how podcasts work, just forgive me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind and get real basic here for a second. If you had that problem, you, you pull up the Ron and Don show, you click on a link, you see it on Facebook, you see me share it on Instagram. Somebody shares it with you, texts it with you. You get this link and you click on the link and it starts to play. And then you get out of your car and you start it again and it rewinds all the way back to the beginning and starts over and you get really frustrated. What is happening there is that you are listening in an internet browser. Mm -hmm. So on your phone, believe it or not, there's an inter the internet lives inside your phone. Oh boy. And if you're listening in a browser, it's going to reload the page the next time you hit play. So all you need to do is to choose an app and download the app. It yeah. can be any of the apps. Okay. If you have an iPhone, you already have the podcast app. It's a purple icon. It's already there. You just have to touch the button, log in, and search the Ron and Don Show. If you're on an Android phone, we're on the Google Podcast app. You just download that. You can download Stitcher. You can download Anchor. So download an app. Download is, an app. Is, is what, so you're then, not listening on the internet. Then so it will that. keep track of where you are You can stop the and world. start yourself, and then you can pause right. and... and and, uh, and when you get in and out yeah. of your car, it will still be there. Yeah. It just means you have to listen in an app for that feature. Like when Charlie's chewing on the side of the table and you can actually hear that and it's bothering you through the podcast. You can rewind it. You can fast yeah, forward. Yeah, because we don't have time to edit this. So if Charlie's in here chewing on something, chances are uh, you're going to hear that, right? So anyway. Hey, uh, let's get to Ron and Don's five things. And before we do that, don't forget, our thanks to everybody out there as kids are getting out of school. we got to think about kids going back to school. Cops help kids when they go back to school. That's what Charlie's done dinosaurs all about and so far we have sold hundreds of t-shirts the ron and don nation t-shirts show us your t-shirt show us that you're part of the nation and we'll put it up on our facebook pages all our social channels take a picture with that t-shirt how do you get that t-shirt just go to ron and don.com buy a shirt for yourself or a friend someone you know that's in the nation uh take a picture and again five dollars go toward charlie's dinosaur and so far we've raised over a thousand dollars for charlie's dinosaur and we'll be presenting that dad troyer in the pierce county sheriff's department here in the coming week so if you want to be a part of that, ronanddon.com. And if you're ever looking for the podcast or anything Ron and Don, go to ronanddon.com. And there, too, you can do what thousands have done. You can sign up for the Ron and Don Nation newsletter. The newsletter, the podcast, drops every Monday morning. Ron and Don's Five Things. All right, let's get to five things. And something that I was never great at, and it seems like my son struggles with this, too, and I bet your kiddos do also. Especially if you have a bit of a hyper personality and a lot of a lot of energy, I did not do well. I did not do well sitting in a chair uh, when I was young and I was at school. I just didn't do well with it. And this week, Ron and I went back to school. Yes, we did. Real estate brokers now with Windermere they do something called Pro Start, and you and I had to go sit at a desk. Uh, for, all day, yeah, all week, all week. All, we had to sit at a desk for eight hours a day, and I haven't sat at a desk. I thought about this. I haven't sat at a desk for eight hours uh, since I was probably in college, right? And I thought this would be an easy thing to do. And in fact, a lot of times I coach my son about being able to sit down and sit still and focus. Yeah, and again, I, I really struggled when I was younger. I could not believe how difficult it was for me to sit in that chair and sit still. I was struggling, man. And listen, it was very, very difficult. And then on top, and this is what I have to ask you, on top of that, on top of that, we were in a class where we had people that had a lot of questions. And I don't mind. 
I don't mind when people have a lot of questions. I just mind when people are asking questions of answers that have already been given like five, 10 minutes ago, and they're not paying attention. Because what's different now is a lot, like in this class, a lot of people are on their laptops. A lot of people were on their cell phones. People were taking cell phone calls and standing in the back of the room and chit-chatting. You could hear the chit-chat going on. And then they come back, sit down, and ask a question that has already been answered. So I wonder how teachers, I wonder how professors deal with this in the modern age. And the other thing is this. When I have a question, and I have a lot of I, I believe when you go to a class and you have paid for that class and you have a question... I think you should jump in and ask it. And Correct. a lot of times people are afraid to do that. They're afraid to interact. This is my question for for you, though, Ron, because you were driving me nuts. Oh, what was I doing? Absolutely nuts. And it wasn't because of the questions you were answering, because the questions you were answering. Was it because I was on my cell phone? No. A lot of times the questions you were at you, were, and we didn't sit side by side at the at the same table. Think, and people have that expectation. It took of people it. till Thursday They're to like, go, oh, that's Don? Why aren't you sitting next to you, Ron and Don? Why aren't you sitting at the next table? It's, it's like, like, please. Yeah, because you know what? I wanted to sit next to Amanda from Polsbo and get to know somebody a little bit different. So, nonetheless, what I try to do. All right. Why was I driving you crazy? When I have a question or I want to interact, and again, you're paying a lot of money for this, so you should interact with the professor, or the teacher who's ever given the Great seminar. Great instructors all week. What I, I do is I give a wave. I just I I put my hand up real quick, and then I put it down. Okay. And then I look for the moment of opportunity to jump in and 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 have the conversation, and I wait until the instructor is done expressing themselves, and and so I'm looking for those cues. What you do. Hmm. is you put your hand up in and, the the, and the hand doesn't come down. No, it I have does a question not, now. So I don't understand why you, because there's a speaker, someone that stands up and speaks in front of people, and you do this too. When somebody sits there and they have their, or we're doing a radio broadcast and somebody has their hand up, it completely distracts me, completely distracts me from what I'm trying to say or what I'm trying to express. And I don't know why. When, when you had a question that the hand didn't go up, and then, and then there would be times where, where the where the speaker would acknowledge you, and you would still no 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 you no, no, still, no. You, the hand was still here's, up. Here's the thing: if you don't acknowledge me, then I'm keeping the hand up why so that you, I know that I got. The, why are you, you keep? Everybody knows this. You got to do a, at least a point to acknowledge. So I see your hand. I did the point. No. The, the instructors that pointed at me, I put the hand back down. I never had an instructor say to me, I'll get to that question in, in, they in a to, minute. They don't have to say anything. You, they why have do you, to, you're a grown-ass man. Why, why do you need to be pointed at? They have to acknowledge that they know that I have a question. See, to your previous point, I, Mike, I ask good questions. And almost, I'd say at least 70% of the time, no, you ask great people questions. say... Good question. But then you get argumentative too. Like, with, uh, like I'm, with the, I'm pushing back. Like with the attorney the when other the day. When the lawyer was there, and you the lawyer got up. Very, very argumentative. I'm, I'm with practically the, with, with, an with amateur the, attorney. With the attorney. And so, well, I, why is that though? Why? So tell me about the hand, and then tell me why you got argumentative with an attorney. I want to. Uh, you're right. I will concede you that I may linger with the hand up too long. I think you. Linger. So I, I a, linger. Yeah. Sometimes a little think long. And I think you're distracting to who's ever. To who's I'm ever probably speaking distracting because I think my question is more interesting than the topic. I think hand. you like being distracting. I think there's part does. of me that likes to be distracting. I think you like it. I okay. sit in the front row. Yeah, you do. Uh, and Chelsea sits in the front row. We're front row people. You were front row. People. We went to to real estate school together. We sat in the front row right next to each other. Oh, you in, did in real estate you school. You and Chelsea did. Okay. And so we she's we're great. we're our front row buddies. Okay. Uh, she's very polite and very put together, and I'm a hot mess over there raising my hand. Uh, Why and, are you a hot mess? I didn't think you're a hot mess. Uh, I got distracted Thursday and Friday. I was running out of gas. Oh, you were. Okay. I, had my, I was distracted on my phone a little bit. I checked Instagram a couple times. I. I have to admit, uh, someone brought cupcakes. I had two cupcakes. I, I was telling myself to sugar not fries. eat the cupcakes. Yeah. So I was going a little a little all over the place with the caffeine and the sugar. And then they brought pizza. And I had uh, multiple slices of pizza because that looked really good. So I, I was a little bit of a hot mess oh, on Friday. Too much pizza, too, too much, much sugar, pizza, too, too many much carbs. coffee. It Weird. was, okay. oh, and I was, uh, so yeah, I will concede that I probably swerved into the lane of annoying yeah. From time to you were, time, you were you got a little you you became that guy a little bit, but the but the quality of the question sometimes people do that, and the quality of the question is not, and the the questions don't. Say, and on day one, we saw we saw that person, and then she disappeared for four days. Uh, and There's I don't some people that don't know how to ask a question. I don't, they, I don't need your whole life. Well, then they start telling you your whole life, their just whole give experience. Me the question. It's like yeah, we we weren't asking about your life; we were just asking a question. So here's the thing: I grew up uh, with my dad Bob on a steady diet of. Uh, Police procedurals and law shows. Mm. 
Uh, and I don't know if, if your family was like this, but if we had a lot of Kojak too. Yeah. Night Court, sure. uh, Quincy, oh, yeah. uh, Marcus Welby, <laughs> like going all the way back old school, Rockford Files, oh, yeah. uh, in the, into like Boston Legal, wow. like all the Law and Order. So <laughs> like I have hundreds, probably thousands of hours yeah. of uh, police procedurals slash uh law shows on there that's good and in all of the scenes yeah. when the lawyer is doing his presentation somebody cross and they cross hard they do yeah you got to cross and you got to cross hard so when it's my turn to cross examine the witness yeah when you had andy griffith from mayberry no longer in mayberry hanging out with don Knotts and aunt b and opie taylor matt but now he's on matt law yeah you're yeah. When, when it's time to cross every time so right. when, when when i'm going to cross examine the witness who mm. in this case is the instructor yeah then i'm i'm bringing it you, you brought, I gotta, it I gotta brought. bring it hard it's brought yeah. i'm gonna have a second question if yeah. my objection has not been met mm -hmm. and then i feel like now i know what our RCW stands for, yeah. and so uh, I'm going to use that and act like I know what the law is and the statute. Yeah. Uh, I, so I have these buzzwords in my head, and I want to get them out. Yeah. I want to for the class to say, is this guy a lawyer? No. Is this guy a guest star no, on Marcus it, Welby? It start, what is going on? It start getting a little cringy sometimes, though. It was, you, it was a little cringy. You would get a little cringy, and you're like, ooh, you're really, you're really not you're, as hopefully not as cringy as the. Uh, woman that told her life story every time she asked a question well she was only there on the first day right. so yeah so then but you're right no, no, I, th I, th I thought maybe in life you didn't feel seen and and there was some kind of maybe a hey, little bit is, this is ronnie over here see me a little, thought, little bit i thought maybe maybe that was and i got and then why why did you lock horns with an attorney i mean you i, locked I like it you locked horns with her. i like watching a lock it's a little uncomfortable attorneys. for everybody i hope it was when you're locking horns. hey if i if there's ever a lawsuit that's gonna get uncomfortable times okay you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet o'neill yeah. like that's what that's my, my stance yeah but I, I have to admit i have not eaten that poorly in a long time mm. my, and you used to know this for me from knowing ourselves our whole lives my body sugar was all over the map and i, would, I just couldn't focus okay i could not focus so you took it out on the rest i had a little bit of a with your a, lingering hand and your I long had, long question a bit of a vegan nachos moment after that class what was, was your big takeaway from from the whole week what did, what, did, what did you learn when you're at windermere uh pro real estate school uh, honestly i think that the, the my biggest takeaway and I, I don't know what yours was i'll ask you what yours was when i'm done my biggest takeaway is that my misconception going into this is like, okay, we're going to get into real estate is that finding that dream, finding the dream house for someone. This was the mental picture I had. Mm. I'm going to meet somebody, could be someone in the Ronda nation, could not, just a, a client. And I'm going to help them uh, envision them moving in with their family into the house of their dreams. Like that's the, the movie that played in my mind. It's like uh, in my version, it was either a couple or a man, a wife, and, and a couple kids, and they're going to move in, and they're sort of thrilled with the way that you treated them. They're thrilled with their new house, and, and then end of scene. Like, that's sort of the vision that I had, and the, the thing, the reality is, is finding the, the actual physical house is kind of just the beginning point, and there's this whole contract transaction thing i was so scared by that class after the lawyers and all the paperwork i did a practice transaction today and i sent it uh, to our assistant managing broker she sent me back I, I, a laundry list of mistakes that i made a la a laundry she's trying to be very nice yeah but you did this wrong you did this wrong you did this wrong so i i'm i'm falling in i need to fall in love with that process uh which i'm trying to do so that's the biggest surprise what was the biggest surprise to you yeah just uh how just how long that all was. <laughs> Eight hours of class time long, is long. Long, man. This is long. But it's great. All the instructors were really great. They were great. Even the ones that you argued with, then you had the lingering ham. Yeah, I don't know how people go to school every day. Congratulations all the kids that got out of school. Right. Good job. <laughs> like you just did that for eight months or however long it was? I know. Holy cow. <laughs> and you're doing that when you're seven? I know. Like, I get, uh, geez. I, know. I had to go outside and just walk around every yeah. once in a while. All right, coming up on the Ronnie Don Show, have you ever lost a wallet before? And was it ever returned to you? A wallet, a purse, a backpack? Do you know that there were wallets that were dropped all over the world? And you're not going to believe what happened as a result of these wallets being dropped. Some of them with credit cards, some of them with cash, some of them with keys, some of them with nothing in them. Do people return them? 
or did they hang on? You're not going to believe the results of this study. It's the Ron and Don Show on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Don't go anywhere unless you want to. It's the Ron and Don Show starring Ron and Don and sometimes me at ronanddon.com. Like it or not, you're listening to the Ron and Don Show. You can find the guys at ronanddon.com. All right, it's the Ron and Don Show on the Ron and Don uh, Radio Network. Don't forget everything Ron and Don at ronanddon.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Buy a Ron and Don Nation t-shirt. $5 goes towards Charlie's Dinosaur, helping cops help kids. And every Monday, the show drops. You can listen to it on YouTube. Subscribe there, or there's eight other ways you can listen to it. All that information is up at ronanddon.com. And Ron and Don, our realtors, will help you with your life's big decision. Buying or selling, just go to ronanddon.com. And our thanks... All of it is powered uh, by Windermere. So we were talking about last segment. Was your cap and gown a little tight when we graduated real estate class? What? Your cap and gown. What? <laughs> Never mind. I was trying to make a cap and gown joke since it's graduation season. Oh. So this uh, this story came out this week, and I'll be interested to see what you think. So here's the experiment. Do you think if you found a wallet? on the ground or if someone gave you a wallet, you're at your place of business and someone gave you a wallet and said, hey, I found this on the ground, that the amount of money in that wallet would have an effect on whether or not you returned it to the owner. The amount, does the amount of what's in the wallet affect and how would it affect what you do with the wallet? What would you expect to happen in this scenario? Yeah, this is what I, what, what I expected and I was blown away by this. I figured if somebody found a wallet and there were a few dollars and a few cents in it that the majority of people would take that wallet and that they would at least, because I've had people do this before, at least mail back their credentials. Even if they wanted to hang on to the money, I've had people that have either found my wallet or stolen my wallet on two different occasions mail me back the credentials because they'll go through and they'll go, wow, you know, this here's the ID, here's the driver's license, here's some of their credit cards. Here's their stuff and their health cards and whatnot. It seems like uh, maybe they have a child here. And so they look at it. They're sympathetic. And it's a one-way mailing. And again, I've had this twice. And I was very appreciative. I didn't care that they kept the money. I was so appreciative that they sent me back my identification. And all those cards and everything had been canceled. But the fact that somebody was out there that found it or stole it and was willing to send it back, that meant uh, a lot to me. I thought, though, before I read this study, that if people found a wallet and it had lots of money in it, I mean lots of money in it, I didn't think that wallet would ever be returned. And this is really incredible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so this is a study that was done. And they had the same theory. The scientists thought, okay, if we put $13 in a wallet, uh, it's probably going to come back at whatever percentage it comes back. But if we put $100 or more in cash in this wallet, then clearly the return rate's going to go down. That's what the theory was going in. Turns out they were absolutely wrong. And so the folks that did this study... Uh, and they published this in the journal Science. They took 17,000 wallets, I believe in 40 or 42 different countries. And here's how it would work. They would have, mo- it was a weird thing because it wasn't a real wallet in the way we think of it. It was like a, it was a kind of one of those clear billfold style pocket thing that sort of had a latch on the outside, but it was clear. Pl- like when you go into the Seahawk game and they give you the see-through bag nowadays, it was kind of like that, but in wallet form. So you could see, th- you could see the currency through the, the, because they really wanted to bait they, people. Yeah, they wanted to bait people. Yeah. And so what they did is they would have either $13. It always had a little bit of currency or a lot of currency. It had like a, a, a to-do slash grocery list, handwritten. So it was a little piece of paper and it said, you know, pick up groceries, buy some toothpaste, drop off Charlie at the dog walk or whatever. It had this list of things. Yeah. Sometimes there was a key like a house key type of deal. Sometimes there wasn't a key. And then again, the dollar amount varied. And so what they thought is the more money's in there. Sometimes there's a house in there. And these were much, right. these are much bigger wallets. Though. The more money, the lower the rate of return is going to be. And that was the exact opposite. So they, yeah. would draw, they would have someone take this wallet into a reputable place of business, a hotel, a bank, 
a supermarket, somewhere, find someone that's like a uniformed name tag type employee. A brothel. A brothel. Yeah. And say, and they, if they go, I found this wallet on the street. I'm a tourist. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how to get this back to them. And then they would leave. Yeah. And so what they found is actually the more money that was in there, and if the key was in there, then the key the, was key. The key was key. The key was key. That they would, uh, that the, the amount of returns would go up. Skyrocket. With the money intact. Yes. And so the, the, everyone was super surprised by this. I was super surprised. And they surprised. said that the, the main reason that when they went back and they actually interviewed people that returned it is that they felt like, because they felt like with the money that they were stealing the money uh, when the note and the key were in there. If it was, and oh, and they all had business cards in there, so they know it was a name because it was personal. So you felt like you were actually right. stealing money from this individual. Right. So you'd pull yeah. out the business card, and it was like Don O'Neill, yeah. American badass, right. uh, triple threat, a dog mm-hmm. owner, was on the business card. Right. And then you're like, okay, this is Don's thirteen dollars. Windermere Realty. I wonder what his key, what this key does. He's yeah. got to pick up dog food tonight. Ah, they would feel bad and feel like a jerk. Um, and then as the money increased in all the countries, except for Peru. Peru, for some reason, and I'm, I'm, this is not nothing. I've never been to Peru. Yeah, I would like to go to Peru. It yeah. seems like a lovely place. We have nothing against Peru, but in Peru, we don't want hate mail from Peru. Yeah, if this if the podcast ends up blowing up in Peru, please yes. don't send us your hate mail. Please don't. In Peru, they took the cash. They did. <laughs> 90% of the time, it did, man. cash was adios. It didn't matter in Peru. Peru. It didn't matter. And so Peru. they tried to figure out if um, maybe it's just because Peru is a relatively poor or a poor country and they really needed the cash. Mm-hmm. And so this got them, the researchers down the road of, well, what comes first? People being educated and socialized to not steal or once you uh, have been stolen from, mm. then you don't want to then return the stealing when you're in the position to not be a stealer. <laughs> and so they you have. Know what's it- weird is I kind of understood the yeah. second part of what you said. So they they haven't really figured it out yet. Yeah. But um, I see. Here's my biggest thing. We talked about this a bunch of times before. I would only take the money if it's insured money. If it's personal money. And it's uh, some person, man or woman's business card. No. I'm not taking that money. Not taking it. However, if a Brinks truck drove by my house right now and a bag of cash fell into my driveway, that's insured money. So you're taking that it. money has an insurance policy on the money. Therefore, I think that money's free game. That is free. If a gold bar fell out of the back of that Brinks truck, that gold bar is insured. Yeah. That's my gold bar. You're taking it. That is my gold bar. I'm going to pick it up with both hands, bring it in here, melt it down into, into bullion, <laughs> into ingots, and, and I'm selling that gold. Okay. Because it's... it's so you're not calling the FBI. Keepers. You're not you're not calling the local police department. It's finders keepers. And when you go to trial and you stand before uh, a jury... I'm invoking finders keepers. You're going to tell them it's finders keepers. Losers weepers. Okay. Everybody knows yeah. finders keepers, losers weepers. All right. But if that's like my neighbor's yeah. gold bar, I'm bringing the gold bar back. I would, I've, and I've done this. Someone, I'm, I'm, I'm walking beside someone at the yogurt store. Twenty dollars falls out of their pocket. I've picked up the twenty dollars yeah. and given them back to because I just saw it fall out of their pocket. Yeah. You know what's weird about that? I was really surprised the number of wallets that were returned, whether they had money in them or not, whether they had a key or not, whether they had a business card or not, whether they had a personal note in them or not. Overall, people around the globe are pretty honest. No matter what economic background they're from, and that was that was pretty surprising to me. The other surprising part that yeah, if it didn't have much money in it, then typically those wallets uh, didn't fare as well as far as getting returned. So how about that? What are your thoughts? Find us at uh, ronadon.com. Uh, and don't forget, uh, you can join us on our social channels, uh, too. Ken. You can. Ronadon, show, Ronadon Radio on Instagram, on Facebook, all stuff. You can even send us a voicemail through the Anchor app. Anchor.fm. Just go to your app store, type in Anchor. That's the one. And you can send us a voicemail and sponsor the show if you want to monthly right there on the app. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right. Coming up uh, on the Ron and Don Show, Ron, something you want to talk about in... Uh, in 30 seconds. What is it that you want to talk about? The power of one push-up. Power of one push-up. You're going to love this. I can do one of those. You think you're going to love this? When we were going to school this week on the breaks, I would go outside and do push-ups. And then I would slap myself in the face. And I'm like, why am I slapping myself in the face? 
but you just get to the point sometimes where coffee doesn't even work anymore. I know. When you're just sitting there at a desk. So I'd sit there. We went to Windermere Pro this week, and I was just trying to hang in there. I don't know how people do it. Are I don't we know pro now? Do. What's that? Are we officially pros? I don't know. We have a certificate. That says All right, don't forget to uh, support Charlie's Dinosaur by Ron and Don Nation t-shirt. Go to ronanddon.com right now. We'll see you in 30. Ron and Don. 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 On the Ron and Don Radio Network, man. Okay, how much do I have to pay you for this? <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> You should buy a shirt. It's the Ron and Don Nation t-shirt. Five dollars goes toward helping kids. It's cops helping kids. Find out more at ronanddon.com. All right, it's uh, the Ron and Don Show. Is this podcast number five? Is podcast that right? number five. Yeah. Hey, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. All brought to you by the fact that Ron and Don Nation and Ron and Don Nation, we are realtors, and uh, we love to help you in life's biggest transaction. You can go to ronanddon.com to find out more. And, of course, our thanks to uh, Windermere. Uh, for being great partners uh, with us. That's right. So if you're within the sound of our voice anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, just go to ronanddon.com or ronanddonbrokers.com and we will help you negotiate through one of your life's biggest uh, transactions. Something that's pretty important to me, it's always been important to me, is working out. Physically working out. About a year and a half ago, and I've shared with you uh, before about this journey that I started where I just tried to eat better. And I lost 30 pounds. I stopped drinking alcohol over 521 days now. Uh, it's been. Eat a lot more vegetables. Every once in a while, I'll cheat and eat some meat. Uh, but I try to make sure that it's great meat, that's a great cut, and that it counts. Uh, and I follow something. It's, it, it's probably more along the lines of a Mediterranean diet. And if you look at all the diets that are scored out there now, and I know there's lots of different diet fads, but I think it'll be interesting when we get down the road, we look at the keto diet, for instance, and we see the science, and we're not really going to be able to see the science till we get 10 years down the road to see what type of effect that diet has on your body long term. Uh, we do know the Mediterranean diet. There's lots of science out on the Mediterranean diet, and there's a book called The Blue Zones, and they look at seven different places around the world, and they talk to uh, hundreds of uh, centurions, and if you don't know what centurions are, uh, those are people. Is that the, when you have a horse body and then a human Am I saying figure. that wrong? What do I mean to say? Centurion? Yeah, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> you have a horse, a horse body <laughs> and a human torso. A centaur. I do know what a centaur is. Centenarians. There we go. Uh, people that have lived 100 years or longer. And they've talked to hundreds, interviewed thousands. And uh, these are people that live to be 100 years of age or more, but not with oxygen tanks and not in hospital beds. These are people that still have vibrant lives. And there's uh, seven or eight things that they all have in common, even though they live in different parts of the globe. And one of those is the lack of meat, eating lots of plants, and also people getting outside and moving. Not necessarily going to a big box gym, which I used to do a lot, but just finding activity where you move and continue to move find ways to move throughout the course of the day because even if you sit on your bottom all day long for eight hours like we did when we were going to real estate school the other day and then you go work out pretty hard for an hour and then the rest of the way you're just kind of chilling out and relax that's not necessarily great for you either it's trying to find a way to move and consistently uh, move through the day. And so, Ron, you did some uh, research on... Well, this uh, is an interesting studio. story that came out today because I, I have a birthday coming up uh, and I'm just thinking along the same terms you do of like keeping healthy, moving forward. So this study is called The Power of One Push-Up. It's uh, by a doctor in the Atlantic. And so the, it's, it's very interesting because you hear body mass index all the time. You hear about high blood pressure all the time. Uh, you hear about uh, your respiratory system all the time. All these numbers numbers that they throw at you and every time you go to the doctor you got to do your weight and you got to do the the arm cuff and they take all these diagnostics and he said for the most part all those numbers are relatively meaningless like the rock Dwayne Johnson the rock 
his BMI, he's technically obese. If you go by the the standard of because it's a ratio between your height and your body weight, and when you put that into a BMI calculator, the rock would be obese. And so he said he, they, they did a very interesting study um, to figure out the actual life expectancy. So what people care about is how how long am I going to live? Longevity, yeah. And and have, what's my quality of life going to be? Right. And so they said your 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 respiratory rate doesn't really matter. Uh, and in a lot of ways, your BMI matters, but not in a in a slavish way. And so you, you know if you have a BMI of fifty, of course you're going to be in trouble. But your BMI when it's be you know in when you look at the micro numbers doesn't really matter. So what they did, scientists uh, went to Indiana in the fire department there and they said, hey, firefighters, we want to do a 10 year study. It's going to be very simple. And we think the firefighters are going to totally dig this. What we want to do, all we're going to have you do is we're going to gather all the firefighters up and you're going to go to the doctor like you normally do every year, whatever it is. But we're going to have a contest. It's going to be a push up contest with firefighters so we're gonna get the firehouse together we're gonna compete against other firehouses we got a thousand fire firemen in india and you know firefighters in indiana very competitive one house to the next house oh, especially in indiana and so here's yeah. what they do the uh, moderator comes out he takes out a metronome and you could probably nail this with all your years as a spin instructor 80 bpm yeah that's what he puts on the metronome nice. 80 bpm and so he starts it. The firefighters get in position one at a time. And here are the rules. When I say go, you got you to gotta do push-ups to the metronome. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to try to get to 80 push-ups. Okay. Now, you either, if you, if you miss three beats in a row, then we're out. That's when we stop. So if it click, 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 and then you go three clicks without a push-up, it stops. But if you do one, if you pause for one click, you can resume uh, if you just skip a click, all right? So you're going to get 80 clicks. If you, if you pause for three or you collapse from exhaustion, then you're out. And all if right? you don't know how fast 80 would be, think of any top 40 song that, that you like or your kids listen to, any bubblegum, candy rock, all that stuff rolls at about a 60 uh double time is a 120 and i know this just because uh it's a spin class half second that's and fast. all the songs yeah so and so roll rolling at, one a second yeah rolling at an 80 uh like on, on a on a spin bike that would be like a that would be like a fast jog so, so let that, me that, before i get to the results let and me to do, ask you this and question to do, and to do 80 in a row 80 and you can you can pause for two clicks i don't i don't you know you can't pause for three clicks but you can pause for two clicks that's the goal i don't, I don't that, that that's the, the top of the curve what do you so before what do, so what do you think you could do before we get to the results because i want to do what percentage of americans according to this research that was just done cannot do one push-up so this is why the articles are the power of one push-up what percentage of adult americans right now cannot do one push push-up wow i'm gonna go with 63 uh, percent come on what one push-up yeah no it's 30 20 to 30 percent they believe cannot uh, do just, one push up of all americans of all, of all adult americans i would just so just do that. one you just got to go down one time down and back up no once. I, a, a legitimate push-up that's no, just what think, the study said. Twenty yeah, to thirty percent cannot do one push-up. I think it's I think it's much higher than that. So the real because we are an aging population, and most people that are baby boomers, and if you and and I'm talking a real push-up, I'm not talking some fake push-up here. I'm if you're doing a real push-up, the the majority uh and the the majority of women, uh especially older women, would have a really hard time doing doing. Well, that's a what they said in this. That it, for and, however and the they measured their majority of men push in this country are obese, so they would have a really hard time doing a a legitimate push up because their belly would hit the. And I'm not joking. Their belly, belly would, would hit, hit the, the ground, ground before their chest did. So, so I, I I think those numbers are way off. So this was published in the Journal of American Medical Association. Yeah. Here is the here are the results. Nearly, hardly anyone could do 80 push-ups. So 80 was like your off-the-charts super athlete if you could do 80. So nearly nobody did 80. But they, what they found... Well, hang on. You're talking... It's 80 in a row. It's 80 with... You can skip two beats. So yeah. click, click. If you skip three, you're out. So it's but basically 80. Two, it's 80 push-ups in a row. It's 80 push-ups in a row. Yeah. So to say that people can't do 80 push-ups, that's not true. You're asking people to do 80 push-ups in a row, and I'm telling you, I don't know if I could do that right Hardly now. Hardly anybody could that's do that. Tough. That's tough. The real number... And I'm in pretty good shape. That's tough. The real number is 40. 
So what they found is if you could... What do you mean the real number is 40? The the significant number in the research, they followed these firefighters for 10 years. Okay. If Among the people that could do 40 push-ups on the metronome, so the firefighters would come in, the guy hits the metronome, they could bang out 40. If you could do 40, there was a 96% reduction in cardiovascular disease incidence. This was more significant than any study with BMI, any study of blood pressure, any study of cardiovascular health that this the push-up study is more indicative of your overall health than any other study that they found and it's similar to the other two that they said that were really interesting is that if the speed at which you walk so if you walk the average is 2.6 feet per second for every uh four inches more per second that you walk Mm. your uh your chance of dying in the next decade declines by 12 percent. so the faster you walk that's another one and then how good your grip is so if you're in your 60s 70s or 80s and you have a really good grip yeah that's the other thing so the number of push-ups you can do how do you know if you have a really good grip they do it in the study i could dig in there your grip and how fast you walk Mm. are more important or they're they're they they're more of a telltale sign of your quality of life and longevity than looking just at bmi looking at your uh, your blood pressure let's put some time on the clock and uh let's see how many push-ups you can do right now I'm, i'm having shoulder problems right now I'm not even joking. Come on. I tweak my shoulder. Well, let's see how many. You know what? You, when you everything, when I go running with my friends, we everything just say, hurts. you know what? Everything hurts. We go around the circle. I don't think Every, I could do everyone, 40. everyone complains. I don't think I could do 40. And then we go and and we and and then we just run. So right, I don't think I could do 80 in a row right now. I know There's that no I, could do, I, can do I could do 40. So I'm, I, I'm not going to be very interesting on that. But I'd like I'm, to see. <clears throat> maybe. I'd like to see where you get on this. So, What's that? 10. All right, I'm gonna put you on the. Give me that, I'm gonna. Give me that, the, what the BPM is? I'm gonna put you on my timer, huh? What's the, the beats per minute? Okay, hang on. And uh, so, all right, I'm gonna count you off. Let's just see how many you can do in a row. Let's not worry about the uh, beats. Per, so Ron is down. You ready? On his floor. In five. In four. In three. <clears throat> hang on. Okay. What are you doing? What's that? Well, you're planking over here. Come on. Okay. Here we go. We don't need a timer. I'm not going to make it to the whole minute. That's probably true. All right. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and begin. And there's one, and there's two, and there's three, and four, and five, and six. That's awesome. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's great. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Love it. Fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19. Those are great. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Let's go, Let's go. Come on. You've done it 25? I'm stopping at 25. You know what? You didn't even struggle at 25. You banged out. pulling that. up at 25. That was pretty good. I've been practicing. That was good right there. That I've was been 20, practicing. That was 25 in about my, th- 33 seconds. My shoulders tweaked. Ah, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on this That's stuff. not even close to 80. It's not, but 40 is my goal. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, because like that, that includes 22-year-old firefighters. Oh, it does. All right. How do you feel? Winded. Seems like the push-ups would give you a heart attack, and that's what you're trying to avoid, right? Well, they say that uh, firefighters, believe it or not, they, uh, heart attacks are the number one killer. Yeah, for firefighters, police officers, a lot of times you get addicted to that uh, adrenaline, and many of them... I think I could have got 30 if my shoulder Many of them wasn't. after they retire, especially in those first five years. If I stretched out my shoulder, I think I could have got 30. It's kind of a telltale sign, and uh, many of them struggle with heart issues in the first five years after retirement. So push-up, it's called... If they've worked uh, 30 years or longer. The power of one push-up. If you can't do one push-up, start with one. You did great! <sighs> did you know you were going to do 25? No. My, I'm legit. I'm, I called my, our, our doctor. We share the same doctor about my shoulder. He wants me to come into the... Get an x ray or whatever. Why? What'd you do? My shoulder's messed up. How did you mess it up? Doing a kettlebell swing (laughs) without any technique. You did great, man. (laughs) Wow. And you didn't even have a heart attack. 25. And you're not even 50. That would be great if I had a heart attack on the show. We'd probably get a lot of downloads. We would get a lot of downloads. A lot of streams if I had a heart attack live on the show. (laughs) Anyway, great job. I'm proud of you. you. That's good. And uh, please send your centaur emails <laughs> to ronadon.com. Yeah. Let's talk about memorable teachers next as school is out and uh, the kids are getting ready for the summer. I bet you're ready 
for the summer too. I sent my son, I sent his teacher who was retiring, a message the other day. I'll share the message with you, and I bet you had a teacher just like her. It's the Ron and Don Show, only on the Ron and Don. Don't go anywhere unless you want to. It's the Ron and Don Show. Starring Ron and Don. And sometimes me at ronanddon.com. All right, we're going to talk about uh, teachers, most memorable teachers here in a moment. Before we get to that, let's get to this. Uh, It seems like jump bikes are everywhere around the city right now. And this is what I want to know. Someone parked uh, two jump bikes in front of my house the other day. Are those the the orange ones? They're the orange ones, and you you, you can't miss them. Uh, and sometimes people don't like to use the kickstand. They have a nice basket. Seems like the basket on those is really nice. Great basket. I think uh, of all the bikes out there at the basket, they're the best. And I, I understood when bikes would get stranded sometimes uh, because they didn't have batteries on them. It seems like all the bikes that people are riding now around the Pacific Northwest and around the city of Seattle uh, are battery operated. This is what I want to know because I live on, on quite a hill. And there were some people that were renting out a room for me, and they went out one day. They were on these jump bikes. They parked them in front of the house. They have now been in front of the house for almost two weeks. Wow. And so nobody has come along, and I think it's because it's on a real steep hill. Nobody is interested on getting on these jump bikes. And finally, the other day, I did two things. One, I took the bikes, and I wheeled them in front of Adam's yard. Hmm. Uh, Adam is my neighbor. He's out of town. And because he's out of town, it's not going to bother him as much as it's bothering me. Why does it bother you? Uh, the jump because they're orange, and any time that I'm trying to walk out to my car, my I got to walk through the jump bikes. And then it, when you when you when you when you pull up to the house, you, the first thing you see are uh, these jump bikes, and I'm starting to for whatever reason. Uh, you hate the jump bikes. Well, I don't hate them, but I just don't know why the the folks that jump didn't come get the. Because I'm ju- having to jump over their bikes now all the time. I go out to mow the lawn. I got to jump over the bike. I go out to get a newspaper. Jump over the bike. I go to get my truck to get coffee. I'm jumping over the jump bike. So now I put it in Adam's yard, and then I found out Adam comes home on July third. And I'm going to have to move the bikes again if Adam's not back. Because well, I come ride the bike. I don't want him to have to jump over the bike. Here's my question, though, because it seems like these bikes are farmed and they're placed all over the city, all over the Pacific Northwest. I know the East Side has these now, and they have vans where they're supposed to come out if a bike is sat too long and get the bike and move the bike around. And nobody has done that. I looked on the bike because I wanted to be helpful, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call the people at Jump and just let them know that there's a couple bikes that were stranded in front of my house. And what I did, why Adam wasn't looking because he's on vacation in Hawaii, screw Adam! And I moved the bikes in front of uh, Adam's house. But then I started to feel guilty and couldn't sleep at night because I have a lot of guilt in my life because I grew up Catholic. So I'm like, okay, I have until July 3rd, and then I'm going to have to move those bikes because I know that Kevin down the street, is I think he's going to Africa. So then I'm going to take the bikes, and I'm going to move them over to Kevin's side. Here's my fear. I'm going to be jumping over and moving these bikes all summer long, and all I want is a 1-800 number so I can call Jump Bike, and they can come get their jump, their, their jump bike. The other thing that I've noticed, too, is I run in Discovery Park a lot. There's 12 miles of trails out there. It's the biggest urban forest trail system in the city of Seattle. It's Fort Lawton. There's over a million men and women that went through Fort Lawton, and now it's no longer an army barracks. Well, 15% of it still is. But it's a great place to go and discover the city. The thing that you also discover, though, is there are jump bikes and line bikes everywhere. They're up in trees. Uh, People have thrown them out in the Puget Sound. Uh, people have cut the brakes on these. They've cut the wheels off. Uh, they use them at Christmas time for decorating uh, trees out in the forest. Uh, it seems like the people that are providing these bikes need to do a better job of cleaning up their bikes, fetching their bikes, moving their bikes, and providing 1-800 numbers. So those of us that don't want to cut the brakes, we don't want to cut the wheels, uh, we don't want to send a message, we don't want to destroy these things. And at the same time, we don't want them just parked out in front of our house or when you're running through Discovery Park, people will leave them just right in the middle of the trail. And now, boom, you have another jump bike that you have to jump over. They need to put 1-800 numbers on these bikes, and they need to come fetch their bikes. People in Portland are fed up, or someone in Portland is fed up. So this is coming out of KATU-TV in Multnomah County. Someone took 57 
electric scooters and bicycles. So uh, the jump bikes, line bikes, and they also do the, the scooter, the electric scooters, which I own electric scooter. They're very fun. But uh, so they took all 57 of these and they threw them into the river, uh, the Willamette River in downtown Portland. So the sheriff's office had to team up. They brought out divers to go down into the river and retrieve these 57 electric e-scooters. Uh, and so people are, are fed up down there because they, they launched 1,975 scooters uh, in a mass launching when that program was uh, approved. And so people down there are just feeling the same way that you're feeling is that they are clogging up the streets, clogging up the sidewalks. There's no real discernible way to park them, to figure out who's going to come pick them up and charge them up. And so someone took the law into their own hand and just threw them yeah. in there. The city's also had 176 medical center visits just on the e-scooters. Oh, I would have meant what, what happened to the stalls? Because it seemed like with the first with the first incarnation of these bikes we saw stalls but then the bikes would sit in stalls and people wouldn't use them so they liked the fact that you could leave the bikes leave the scooters anywhere and that's exactly what people are doing they're leaving them all over the city and now it seems like it's trash in the place is what it feels well, the like thing to that me. i have i don't mind them 99 percent of the time people are conscientious and they find a curb they find somewhere where it makes sense on the grass next to the side they don't park them right in the middle of the sidewalk the thing that's bothering me is the the last two times that i needed one i was on the bus I took the bus. I needed to get back to my car. Uh, I was down uh, at the at the sports stadium, and I didn't want to drive down there to park, so I took the bus. But I had about a mile to go from my the bus stop to the car. So I walk. I open up the app. I find the the, the bicycle. Go over. It's unavailable because it needs to charge. Uh oh. I was like, well, I can pedal. I, I just did twenty five push ups. I saw you do twenty five. They won't let you pedal. The it e -bike. wasn't. It was. It wasn't forty. And it, it wasn't, wasn't 40, eighty. It wasn't but eighty. It was, but it's twenty five. And your shoulder. And this was the shoulder this injury. This was with the shoulder injury. Yeah, but that you almost went to see the doctor. I'm, I'm scheduled to go in. Yeah. Uh, in. And so then I find. Oh, I go. Oh, there's another one across the street. Mm. So I jaywalk, risking a ticket yeah. across the street it's courage, in right Fremont. It's courage right there. Go over to unlock that bike. Right. Guess what happened there? I have no idea. <laughs> That battery's not charged. Okay. I've got to, had to go through about four or five different bikes yeah. to find one where the battery was charged and I could get on that thing. So if they're going to be out there, yeah. they should work. Right, or you're right. yeah. Uh, it's like an escalator. When it's not working, it still stares. Mm -hmm. It's still a bicycle. Right. If the battery's not charged, it still has pedals. Yeah. You can go ahead and unlock that thing and let me uh, ride it yeah. and pedal my way back to my car. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, Jump, come get your bikes. They're over at Adam's house. Isn't that weird? I should be able to take those bikes, park them in front of Adam's Someone house. I should ride the bike. Walk away. Nobody saw me. It was in the still of the night. And yet I have all this Catholic guilt about it. Even sitting here right now, I now have anxiety that those bikes are in front of Adam's house, and I know he's coming home. I have anxiety Atlanta. that your dog is eating my chair yeah. upstairs. That's my anxiety he's out right now. Hey, G-Force! Is Charlie eating that chair up there? All right. How are you? All right. Need anything? All right. What do you need? Huh? All right. What kind of food? Okay. We'll go get some food in a minute. I just finished up the podcast. Love you. All right. How's the chair? What's that? How's the chair? I just checked in with my son, so he can be fine. Yeah. Charlie and G-Force were down here. He had to move him because he was eating your table. <laughs> and then it wasn't Charlie. It was actually going to yes. eat the table. That's well, a good table. Well, you just heard from him. He needs food. Yes, he does. He's hungry. Yeah. And if All I of them are hungry. And if I don't feed him, he's going to eat your table. So, Evidently, dogs like particle board is what we found out today. What did I owe you for? Nothing. We're good. <laughs> Anyway, coming up, you got a memorable uh, teacher on. I do. I do have a memorable teacher. Right. Let's talk about memorable uh, teachers. Because uh, school is out this week, and kids are heading off down a lot of fun, hopefully. And you can be a part of helping kids as we head back to school in just a few short months with Charlie's Dinosaur. You buy a t-shirt. $5 goes towards Charlie's Dinosaur, helping cops help kids. And so far, we've raised over $1,000 for cops. And we can't wait to present Ed Troyer and all the folks at Charlie's Dinosaur with that check down in Pierce County. So 
Thanks for that. Coming back in uh, 30 seconds, it's the Ron and Don Show only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Hey, you guys. Are you ready for the best show in the Pacific Northwest? Here's my dad to his boyfriend hit him. Green friend. All right, school's out for summer. And remember when we had those snow days earlier this year? Do I ever. Wow, this is awesome. And then uh, next thing you know, it's at the end of school, and you're like, ooh, we got to make up these snow days. Snow day was the first two snow days were awesome. They were. Snow day five, six, and seven, not that awesome for me. Something I'm trying to do in, in, in my life, and I always haven't done this so well, is, and, and I think in a time of just rapid movement and so much information always coming at us, sometimes we don't take the time to just tell people. Even though we feel grateful, we don't tell them. We don't find ways to say thank you to them. And sometimes a simple note, I don't know about you, but for me, when somebody writes me a simple note, uh, makes all the difference. In fact, I had a friend of mine a few weeks ago, I was going through something and she knew and she sent me a note, old school, in the mail. And when I got that mail, I was, when you when you get that note in the mail, you're like, you're, you're touched by it because you know there was a moment in this person's life where they sat down, they put pen to paper and they said, thank you, or I'm thinking about you or praying for you or whatever it is. And it really makes a difference and it really touches you. It's It, it was really a, a touching moment. Anyway, I decided this week, uh, to reach out to my son's teacher. And this year, uh, Miss Perez, she is retiring from teaching. Mm. And I didn't find that out until the end of the year. And I don't know about you. Sometimes there, I, when, when I think back, I can't name all my teachers from first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So I, I can't either. I can't do it. But I can name some of the transformative teachers. And Miss Perez for my son uh, was really a transformative teacher. Uh, this year. In fact, I wrote her this note the other day. It said, Ms. Perez, thank you so much for your steadfast patience, your kindness, and the care that you showed to our family this year. Uh, my son in the beginning of the year dreaded going to school uh, because of sometimes feeling behind or his lack of friends. And what did you do? You stood in the gap and you did what all great memorable teachers do. You met him and his parents where we we're at and you helped guide us through this informative uh, or this important transformative year. I know we're all exhausting at times, which we were. Uh, thank you. Be well. Have an amazing journey the rest of the way in your retirement. You'll be incredibly missed. You have left a great legacy. And today, to all the great teachers out there, well done. And thank you. Have a great summer. We'll see you in the fourth grade. And then uh, and then I signed my my name to that. And I sent that to her, and I put something similar up on my, my social channels. I always crack up when people feel like teachers are overpaid or teachers don't do enough. This year, on six different occasions, I went and I was with her, whether it be on a field trip or just uh, something was happening in the classroom and they needed extra hands, extra eyes, uh, extra hearts. And, and so I would go and I'd volunteer my time. Every time I went, whether it was for an hour or three hours, I was completely, ju- and I have a high motor, completely exhausted, just exhausted, just wiped out. And I'm wondering, how does she do this? with 27 students day in and day out. And it's just not the time that they spend at school. And so many of them get there early to prep and be ready. But then if you're one of the, the thing that I loved about her, and I think one of the important things that sometimes we don't understand about teachers is every child in there, just because they're in the third grade or the fourth grade, they are in a completely different place uh, in the spectrum of being in third or being in fourth or being in fifth grade. It takes a very special educator to understand where that child is, to help the parents understand where the child is, and then to meet them all where they're at, and then to help them move forward to the third, fourth, or fifth grade, or whatever that is. Yeah, I would love to take these people to complain and have them just do class for one day. Just do class for For one day. one day. Yeah, and what they do in the evenings, what they do on the weekends, what they do supposedly in their off time, all the prep work, the grading of papers, the counseling, the answering of emails, and then just making sure that these that you have tissue in your classes making sure that when you have snack time that all the kids have snacks picking up 73 jackets making sure that they all the that they all have lunch cuz sometimes not every child has a lunch and making them all feel part of something uh, and you really are the glue that holds everything together and then on top of that there's all these tests 
that these kids have to pass and you're being great as a teacher. And if they can't pass those tests, then you won't be a teacher for very long. So anyway, she was very, very transformative this year. Very, very helpful. And I know that I, as a parent, was a pain in the heart sometimes. But just watching her work, I hope she has a great retirement, a phenomenal life. And uh, I just really appreciate all the great transformative uh, educators out there. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of great ones. One of them, and it's not mine, but I, I, I thought of one that impacted me. But I want to, if you'll allow me to give a special shout out. My big brother is a teacher. And I think he's the kind that you just described. And I'll tell you why this year. He teaches his classes. He also, uh, they, they came to the faculty a couple of years ago and said, we're going to have to shut down the tennis team if one of you doesn't step up and coach tennis. My brother's never played tennis. He doesn't understand tennis. He's never held a racket. He could not serve a ball. He knows John McEnroe and Bjorn Borg. I mean, it's, it's, but that's about it. So he said, I will, I will learn tennis and then coach tennis and teach tennis. And then what happened, what it was, was, so he, he did that. He became the tennis coach and he was teaching girls tennis and boys tennis, going to all the meets. They, they were not very good, uh, but they had, they, they fielded a team and they were out playing singles and doubles in tennis. And most of the time they were not, not doing very well in their meets in the first couple of years. Rob looked great in a tennis skirt, He does. Though, he wears I the really thought. short shorts he and the whistle and the headband, sure. which I think is key. Yes. And then they missed a couple meets because there was no bus driver. Hmm. And so, and you know, sometimes you have to drive a couple hours uh, if someone's hosting an event uh, on another part of the city or out when it gets time for regionals and state, you're driving a long way and they didn't have a bus driver. So my brother this year got his bus driver license so that he could drive his own tennis players to their regional meets and the state meets because he had a couple players that were doing pretty good this year. He didn't want them to miss out. Mm. He knew there wasn't a bus driver that they could rely on. So he went out and he studied. He used to call me uh, and talk about how hard, how nervous he was for his bus driver's license because there's all these special things he had to learn about turning the bus and backing the bus up and yeah. whether or not he could brake at certain times and you have to go through slalom court, all the stuff to be a bus driver. Well, you got to slalom. You got to slalom and you can't. In a bus? You can only knock over so many cones. Wow. So he, and, and he's not a bus driver. Yeah. He's not a tennis coach. He's a teacher. Who would know? Who would have known you had to be able to slalom a bus? I know. So he passed his test. Great. He's, he was driving the kids uh, to state. And again, none of these kids are getting a scholarship to college for tennis. Mm. None of these kids are going to play at the U.S. Open or Wimbledon. These are just kids in high school that found a thing that they liked, and it was going to go away unless a teacher stepped up. That's cool. And so he stepped up, yeah. and now uh, him and sometimes his wife comes out and coaches as well. They coach these kids up as best they can, and they get on a bus – and he will drive the bus for hours uh, to take these kids to tennis tournaments and get paid, what, a dollar an hour after you do all this stuff? That's right. Yeah. After school, every, like he gets a little bonus, but it's a little bit of extra money. Yeah. His Saturdays are taken up. Evenings are taken up. He drives all over the place. And so I, I want to give him a shout out. I, I admire it. I think it's it's amazing that he does this. And so in my mind, he's not my teacher, yeah. but I know he's one of those teachers where if nobody else thanked him this year, I wanted to thank him because that's amazing that is. to get your bus driver's license so that you can make sure that your kids get to the tennis tournament every, every tournament. His name is Bob. Why do you call him Rob, though? Because I just grew up. He calls me Ronnie. Oh. And I call him Rob. You do. Because my dad's name is Bob. Yeah. So okay. I called him Bob and then Rob. Yeah. I call you Steve, and you answer to call Steve. Me Rick. I call you Rick. And then whenever people hear me call you one of those other names, they're like, Aha! I knew your names were Ronnie Don! <laughs> and maybe they're not. Are you a licensed real estate broker? Maybe they're not. What's that? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, thanks to all the great teachers out there. I do not know how you do it. And uh, Bob, who run Colts Raw. He's one of the great ones, too. So I did not know. He's a licensed bus driver now. I did now. not know you had to swallow the bus. Yeah. He said if it goes up on two wheels, you fail. Really? Yeah. You got to do it for time. You know what? That should be a failure. If you're it's in a, easy to take it on two wheels. If you're in a school bus and you take... Really? Yeah. It's easy to take a school bus up on two wheels. It's, he said it's relatively easy when you're doing those tight turns to go up on two wheels. I don't believe that. 
or to have one wheel off the ground. I think it's just one wheel off the ground. Wait, now you're making now you're. I don't I don't have a bus driver. So bus drivers, hit me on Facebook. Is it one wheel or two wheels? I think one wheel off the ground is not that hard in a bus. You're shouting out to all the bus drivers. Bus drivers, hit me up. Okay, sounds good. Hey, don't forget uh, as we get out of here. Uh, the Ron and Don Show drops every Monday. And if you get confused about when it drops or where the T-shirts are at, everything's at ronanddon.com. If you want to know more about our real estate business, you can find that out at ronanddon.com. Love to be your broker. Yeah. And how can we? Uh, how can you subscribe to the podcast, to the newsletter, find that T-shirt, or find out more about uh, Ron and Don and our real estate thing? Well, you can do it at ronanddon.com, like you just said. But if you're a YouTube person, uh, do it on YouTube. If you, um, you just hit subscribe, hit the bell. If you're with Apple, podcast subscribe on apple podcast wherever you're at rate us that helps the algorithms to uh it, it, it suggest this to other people and get the word out so rate the, us what if the rating's real bad doesn't matter yeah is any action's good action oh really rate us subscribe oh and uh, help your friend or your mom or your grandma yeah. if they don't know how to do a podcast app download the app and like i said uh, I would be honored if you jump on the Anchor app and you support the podcast monthly. That really helps us. And uh, buy a t-shirt. That helps us, too. Oh. I rated us the other day. What did you, you rate us? Gave us a one. One star? Yeah. It's not good. You I, was having, change I was having a bad day. I was feeling bad. Great about things. And then I also take... I take jump bikes and I leave them in front of my neighbor's house. It's not very nice, is it? No. No. Adam, if you're listening in Hawaii, don't worry. I'll get those things moved before July 3rd because I know you're coming back. Kevin, I'm going to move over to your house. Hey, jump. Come get your bikes. Jump on over so I don't have to jump over. Anyway, thanks for connecting with us. Thanks for listening to episode number five. Also, make sure you share it with your friends. And a lot of people ask us every day, hey, what happened at the radio station? That's episode number one. And, Ron, a lot of people have asked, what happened with your birth mom? It was a death with dignity story. We did that in episode that's number episode three. episode number three, so check it out. Thanks for everybody that's uh, reached out to me on that story. Yeah. All right. Keep your head up and your shoulders back. We'll see you next week. It's the Ron and Don Show, only on the Ron and Don Radio Network. Ron and Don. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs>